So uh, actually, I have a, I do have a question for um, Dr. Teo. It says here that the Eucerine Spotless Brightening Booster Serum has a special ingredient called Thiamidol. Now, I'm a big fan of reading active ingredients of products. It's kind of like a thing. I kind of like to do my own kind of research. But can you please share with our audience and our viewers here a little bit more about Thiamidol? That's great to hear about your interest in this. Um, so thiamidol is what we consider a potent enzyme inhibitor. So um, really in the context of hyperpigmentation, it inhibits an enzyme known as tyrosinase. And in fact, uh, Eucerin research has found that it is uh, the most potent inhibitor of tyrosinase when compared to over 50,000 other active ingredients that are also um, functioning as uh, tyrosinase inhibitors. I see. So um, you talk about tyrosinase and tyrosinase inhibitors. So what is the significance of tyrosinase in our bodies or in this case for our skin? Well, that's a great question. Tyrosinase is actually a very important enzyme in this process known as melanogenesis, which is the very process uh, by which our skin produces melanin. And that is the process that we are talking about, which is causing hyperpigmentation disorders that we've mentioned before. Exactly. Um, you know, throughout this process, I've learned a lot more about the brand and uh, Eucerin has invested 10 years of research into, into this product and has tested more than 50,000 ingredients. Um, and uh, the Amidol emerged as, you know, the winning agent that really, you know, is the most uh, effective ingredient um, in all of this. Uh, what I really like is that, you know, 10 years is not a short while. I, it makes me feel I, confident, I guess, to use this product um, because I know so much time and research has gone to this. Um, this is a safe product. This is our face after all. We only get one of them and you want it <laughs> to make sure it's treated right. So I, I appreciate yeah, that's right. all of that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I personally found that uh, Thiamidol was very interesting and um, very relevant to my dermatology practice. Uh, in fact, the uh, research that, that has been published, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about it now. Uh, the uh, International Journal of Cosmetic Science, um, they actually found that in a randomized uh, split phase uh, controlled study that uh, Tiamidol was highly effective in um, preventing and treating hyperpigmentation and um, this same result was also found in a separate study, um, the Journal of Investigative Dermatology in 2019. Uh, Thiamidol was um, you know, very much comparable to the gold standard um, treatment for hyperpigmentation, hydroquinone. And you know, what was really impressive was that it was very tolerable and um, you know, it was definitely are better in terms of its side effect profile compared to hydroquinone. I see. Um, you talk about this um, paper and actually I've, I did some research on Thiamidol. I might have came across the same paper as well, but uh, me being me, I always just look at the effects and how effective an ingredient is because I think to most people, that's what they look out for when they um, look at a skincare product. But you've mentioned tolerance as well. And could you please elaborate a little bit more about what you mean in this case by tolerance and a product or an active ingredient being tolerable? Sure, Amanda. So when we discuss active ingredients um, in cosmeceuticals, um, we find that a lot of um, these synthetic actives, uh, I will just take hydroquinone for example, um, they do have the potential to interfere with skin physiology and that's actually the mechanism of action as we discussed it inhibits the enzyme that causes hyperpigmentation. But at the same time, we find that you know, it produces side effects such as redness, dryness, uses very often report stinging, 
um, you know, they observe flaking and this overall very sensitive uh, phenomenon on their uh, skin is really quite uncomfortable. So um, for the two studies that we mentioned before, it was really quite remarkable that the study participants um, reported no significant um, side effects in terms of the uh, usual stinging, burning, uh, dry skin um, sort of irritation symptoms with the amidol. Um, and this contrasted with the, um, you know, the arm that was treated with hydroquinone. And, um, you know, it was equally impressive that both arms achieved a statistically significant reduction in the hyperpigmentation. Um, but of course, for tiamidol, we found that there were no such uh, adverse events with regards to, um, you know, skin irritation. And that, that was observed in the hydroquinone arm. Can I just check? Okay, because for, for me, right, when I hear skin irritation, I normally associate it with vis visible skin irritation. But could you please share a little bit more just for our audience at home on how perhaps they can detect um, these signs of skin irritation? Can you give us like some symptoms of what they should observe for? Sure. Actually, uh, I spoke about it uh, just now, but then let mm -hmm. me just put it in the context of our viewers here. So um, if you find yourself having any of these skin symptoms, then uh, you may very well be suffering from dermatitis uh, or, you know, it's more commonly known as a form of eczema. So dryness, redness, flaking, an uncomfortable burning sensation. Now we want to be a little bit specific here because in the context of what we discussed, we're talking about individuals who have been applying certain uh, cosmetic ingredients on their skin. But if you already suffer from these uh, symptoms, you may have an underlying um, skin disorder. So sensitivity is actually um, very much a lay person sort of perception of what dermatologists would consider, um, you know, dermatitis, and that refers to failure of the skin barrier. So any form of barrier dysfunction can give rise to these symptoms. But, um, you know, with regards to today's discussion, um, and especially the research that was conducted about thiamidol in comparison to hydroquinone, we're really talking about the adverse events induced by synthetic cosmeceuticals such as mm -hmm. hydroquinone. I see. Thank you so much, Dr. Thio, for sharing. 